Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Anglia News. First, the group opposing expansion at Stansted Airport is today at the High Court in London. Stop Stansted Expansion is appealing against the government's decision to allow greater use of the airport's existing terminal and runway. It's not known when the appeal will be heard or whether it could delay next year's public inquiry into a second runway at Stansted. Well, Timothy Evans joins us live now from our Essex News Centre in Chelmsford with the latest. Tim. Papers have been lodged with the High Court in London this morning, effectively putting the government in the dock. Uh, Stop Stansted Expansion alleged that uh, the government was wrong in law to raise the passenger limit on Stansted's existing terminal and runway. Now, previously the limit had been set at 25 million passengers a year, but BAA, the owners of Stansted, wanted to see that increase to 35 million passengers a year. The local council said no, the government said yes. Now Stop Stansted Expansion believe they have grounds for challenging the government's decision. And those grounds come under three broad headings. Greenhouse gas emissions, economics and noise. And Stop Stansted Expansion believe that the issues go beyond the immediate concerns at Stansted and could have national repercussions. Now you might remember the public inquiry uh, into the existing facilities finished just over a year ago into the whole question of what exactly the permitted capacity should be for Stansted. Protesters said it should not be allowed to increase but the government decided it should. Now that decision will be examined by the High Court and several questions arise. The first is can Stop Stansted Expansion afford this legal action and representation of the public inquiry next year into Stansted's second runway? And on the question of that uh, second runway, could this uh, legal action actually delay the start of the public inquiry scheduled for April the 15th? At the moment it's all conjecture but we can expect the timetable for the legal action to emerge in the weeks ahead. OK Tim, thank you very much indeed. The Norfolk man, questioned by police investigating the disappearance of Madeleine McCann, has accepted substantial libel damages from the satellite broadcaster. Robert Murat lived at Hockering before he moved to Portugal. His ex-wife and two children still live in the village. He was named as an official suspect by Portuguese police, but no charges were ever brought. Today, his lawyers accepted libel damages from B Sky B over an allegation there was strong grounds for believing he was guilty of abducting Madeleine. In July, four newspapers paid him damages of more than half a million pounds. Detectives in Essex are continuing their hunt for three knife men who terrorised a family at their home. Kim Lambert, her partner Dean Chambers and their three children were held at knife point during the robbery at their house in Rayleigh after the gang burst in through the front door. None of the family was hurt but the robbers got away with jewellery and cash. Students from the University of East Anglia in Norwich have been protesting about the quality of bus services running to and from the campus. They gathered outside the offices of First Eastern Counties in the city this morning to hand bosses their complaints. The company says it's happy to discuss any issues with them, but says it's disappointed not to have been contacted in advance. Patients with chronic heart failure or respiratory problems are benefiting from a pilot scheme, which means they can carry on with their health checks at home. It's being trialled in Mid-Essex and should mean fewer trips to hospital. Wendy Pike reports now. As well as making coffee, Don Hawthorne's morning routine includes a thorough health checkup without even leaving the comfort of his armchair in Southwood and Ferrers. Don, who suffers from emphysema, now has a dock at home. It's a device that twice a day measures his blood pressure and oxygen levels, can take an ECG and asks general questions about his health. Basically, it was given to me as an experiment. and But yes, it... it um, Makes you think there's someone looking over you, as it were. <laughs> Overnight, the important health statistics are sent down a telephone line, arriving at Broomfield Hospital. Here, the specialist medical team looking after Don can assess the results and, if necessary, arrange treatment. I think it's extremely reassuring to a lot of the patients to know that um, they're, they're having the, you know, the continual home monitoring. Um, but it's, it's useful for us as well to, you know, to be able to pick up on, on those patterns um, that occur within their illnesses. The telehealth equipment is being trialled in a year-long pilot project run by CareCall at NHS Mid-Essex, a primary care trust. So far, almost 30 patients with chronic heart or breathing complaints have joined the scheme. Coming into hospital is very traumatic 
for some people. Uh, people tend to recover quicker when they're in their own homes and also it enables us to get them treatment quicker because rather than having, say, a weekly visit from a nurse, they're getting monitored on a daily basis. Whilst Don keeps a watchful eye on his boat at the yacht club, he knows a close check is being kept on his health thanks to some very useful technology. Wendy Pike, Anglia News. Well, let's see what the weather forecast is doing for the rest of this afternoon and the weekend. Here's Amanda Houston. Secure online banking from Norwich and Peterborough. Sponsors of Anglia Weather. Hello there. It's not looking too bad today. And it's mostly dry and staying mild tomorrow. And then there's sunny spells, but it's feeling a bit cooler on Sunday. In the meantime, then, let's get back to today. And if we take a look at the satellite from earlier, we can see all of this cloud was moving in over the top of the UK. However, the south manages to avoid all of that cloud, which is why it's been so bright and sunny so far today. A bit more cloud feeds in this afternoon, though, but it should stay mostly dry with some good sunny spells and temperatures around 13 or even 14 degrees. So the cloud stays with us this evening and we could see the odd shower up in the north there but everywhere else stays dry and it's rather mild in lows of 10 degrees. We start the weekend then, plenty of cloud around, could be the odd shower over in the west but generally not a bad start to the day. And the cloud stays with us for the afternoon but we'll still see some bright or sunny spells. And that's of a top temperature again around the 13 or 14 mark. So moving on to the outlook then, and Sunday should be mostly dry. Again, we'll see some sunny spells, but we might see the odd bit of drizzle later on. And then Monday is mostly cloudy during the day, but then rain moves in overnight, taking us into Tuesday. So it's a wet day then. Goodbye. Online banking from the experts at Norwich and Peterborough. Our thanks to Amanda. That's all for now. And after 10 years and 12,000 bulletins, can you believe this is my very last one? So for the final time, good afternoon. The new look to weekday afternoons continues. House guest is next. The Duke takes a trip to the Isle of Wight at half two, followed by Spin Star.